What's going on guys? Got a really exciting video for you today. Got a bag of G.I. Joe parts. A Cotswold standard head and this really cool blow mold skull that I got at my mom and dad's. Found it in a drawer. Today we're going to be doing a video, basic builds, making a villain. We're going to do a really simple villain utilizing this Cotswold head and a Cotswold body. And we're going to do an advanced villain where I actually mold this uh, skull and sew the clothes. So it's going to be a pretty long video. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. So kick your shoes off, grab a beer, and sit back because we're getting ready to start basic builds, making a villain. Hey right, guys, welcome back. So as part of our villain build today, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to be doing a basic villain first. And this will be a pretty simple build. This is just some spare parts that I had uh, from some other projects that I decided to throw together to do just a standard Mars villain that I use for a lot of my photo stories. You can see I have this head from Cotswold. And I have some spare body parts. This one here, this guy suffered a near fatal injury, I'm assuming, back when he was a G.I. Joe in the 70s. And then we just have some hodgepodge parts. So... As part of this, we'll be going through and restringing this. I think you guys are all familiar with the Cotswold restringing kits. Uh, it comes with the leg elastic, the arm elastic, as well as a couple of thigh pegs. So we'll be talking about how we're going to put all this together and uh, make this a complete figure. And then we will outfit him. Now, like I mentioned earlier... This will be a pretty extensive video because I'm going to do two builds in the video, so it'll be kind of long. So if you guys get a little fatigued by this, always pause it, come back to it later. It's what I usually do on longer videos. But we're going to be doing this guy here, and we're also going to make a brand new villain um, for my G.I. Joe Adventure team as well. So uh, we'll pause the video, we'll get a couple tools ready, we'll come back, and we'll put this guy together. Okay, welcome back, guys. We'll talk about doing this uh, restring kit <clears throat> using this Cotswold restring kit. Not to sound redundant, but it's a really good kit. It comes with uh, elastic for the legs and the arms. Uh, there's several people that make these. Uh, I think this is the best one. Uh, there's a couple on eBay that I've tried that I just don't really like. Maybe I'm not doing it right. But uh, I think these are, uh, these are the cream of the crop as far as your restring kits um, go. And they're pretty cheap, like about $4.99. So, um, so I'm going to show you how I do my restringing now. Disclaimer alert. I know there's always some super genius out there who does it a little bit different. And, uh, you know, I get it. This is how I do it. So... So what I like to usually do is take the hip, per, hip portion, string her through, take my thigh balls or whatever they're called, <laughs> it's not a great name, take my uh, hip, hip balls I guess, put that off to the side. Now I like to uh, make sure that I have the legs uh, correct. As far as your right and your left go, um, usually these are stamped, but these particular legs are not stamped. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you have your legs right as far as your hips go. And uh, this would be the, I believe left leg a good good rule of thumb is to look where the rivet is uh, the rivet if the if the curved head of the rivet is on the outside it's usually the this side that it's supposed to be so this is uh on the left side so it's a left rivet and this is on the right side so it's a right rivet so i like to put the thigh bars in the same way so i slide them in make sure you Put your hip portion in there like so. Let's do the other leg. Slide your thigh bar in. This is a little bit tougher. Sometimes these uh, 
pieces of plastic are a little tight, you got to give it a little bit of a, a force in. So, sorry if my hands are in the way. All right, so my thigh bars are in. And then it's just a matter of lining up your thigh bar with your uh, your hole. This can be, I said, tricky at times because you got a lot going on. So sometimes it's beneficial. This is in. Sorry, and this is in as well. So I've got both the thigh bar pieces in. And I take a, this nail, we'll talk about it in a second. Push that in as best I can. So then we've got our thigh bar pieces in. Now these rivets aren't particularly these thigh bars aren't particularly as good as some of the others. Um, I think they've changed them since then because these heads here tend to sit on the outside and it's hard to get the rivet in all the way to smash it, but we'll, uh, we'll work on that. So I got this tool I made. It's a large finish nail, case, I guess a casing nail for you carpenter experts out there. And I just filed off the end of it to a nice blunt end and then I put it in the rivet head and hit with a hammer I usually have like a 25 pound dumbbell or barbell plate as my kind of anvil because I don't have an anvil so uh, that's how I do that I, I hit I just put that in there put this portion down on the 25 pound plate and then just lightly tap these uh, super soft rivets um, smash them out a little bit so it holds them in place so um, I won't do that on camera because the camera will bounce around a bunch but I'll come back and show you what it looks like after I've done it all right welcome back guys so the rivets have been smashed in it worked pretty well they were not going to look like the original rivets in your GI Joe figures so if you're planning on that you're going to be really disappointed but they are uh Smash enough to where they'll hold the the parts together, and that's all really you want. If you're going for looks, then I don't think this kit's for you. So uh, there we go. We've got the thigh elastic done, which is cool. And uh, we've got this guy off to the side of the string. This is my 25-pound uh, barbell plate that I use. And uh, I've got a couple legs here to put on right and the left so I like to do that last when I assemble the figure the next part of this restring will be the torso with the arms so we'll come back and do that real quick all right guys welcome back so we're going to do the restringing of the torso and the arms so what I usually like to do is start with one arm hook it and then I have this handy dandy tool I made here out of some heavy gauge wire I fish it through the arm slots hook it on there like so these kind of hooks are a little tricky but you know just pull them through and then hold on a second what I'll do is I'll take a nail and put it through that hole. So I need to free up my hands here for a second and do that. I apologize. There we go. So it's fished through there. Now it's kind of a tricky process when you put this <coughs> second arm through here. You want to make sure and hold a little bit of tension so the hook doesn't pop out. And then bam, voila. The torso is done. 
And then using the same tool, just go ahead, stick it down through the hips, hook it on to the neck hook, pull it up through there. Then we'll fish the See this neck, you got a little bit of a problem there with this tension. Let me get a piece of pair of pliers. Hold on a second. No, I'm sorry, not the tension. The hole opening is a little smaller than the hook. So there we go. Sorry about that. Apologize for the hiccup. So there we go. He's all st strung up. Pretty easy process to do. It can be tricky at times. I've screwed my hands up several times with hooks coming loose and digging into my fingers and stuff like that. But we'll pop his Those knees don't want to go in. Hold on a second here. I'll have to sand those knee pegs a teeny bit to get him to pop in, but. Um, you get the gist of it. And then I also wanted to talk about something else. I used these old classic collection feet and just uh, screwed pegs in there. So this is kind of a Frank and Joe. I'll have to take the Dremel and, and uh, sand those down. But these will be the feet for this guy. So uh, the body basically is done. Obviously, the head, we can go ahead and mount it as well, because this uh, Cotswold heads are very pliable. I don't think you really have to heat them up too much. There we go. Heads on there. Cool. And then... Um, We'll come back, we'll have the legs on, we'll get the feet on, and uh, we'll talk about the hands, and then we'll talk about a few other things with this uh, first villain. So stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So here's our villain, complete, our first villain, I guess. Kind of a nice little Frank and Joe. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can see I did the feet. Those worked out great. We'll take those off I'll real quick, and I'll show you what I did with those in case you guys are interested and I want to talk about a couple more things so the feet basically I just took a Dremel and sanded down the little uh, lip that was on the old classic collection feet the classic collection feet are very similar the early classic collection feet are very similar to the vintage GI Joe feet so you can do stuff like this and and then I just made it so I could slide it in there kind of worked it with some sanding discs on the Dremel so those feet fit in there so if you're have a giant surplus of damaged classic collection figures and you want to make some feet for your vintage Joe, there you go. Now the hands, I went ahead and went with a set of uh, Cotswold gripping hands. My intent was to use a couple of Cody at Pop Locks 4583's uh, hand adapters and put some uh, tactical hands in there, which I might at some other point in time, but I am out of those right now from different projects, so I need to order some more from Cody and uh the airing of this video obviously so yeah that's what we got here so this is our get him set up here this is our first villain um we're gonna pause the video and we're gonna start on the second villain and i think you're really gonna like it so and then we'll finish it all up with some uh clothing and whatnot so uh, stay tuned all right welcome back guys so we'll start working on villain number two right now um, like I mentioned, this is a blow mold head that I found at my mom and dad's. Um, and I decided to use it to make a, a villain for my adventure team. Uh, what I've done is I've taken an old uh, Cotswold neck post and buzzed, buzzed off the uh, top portion of it. And then I took some Sculpey, mil or uh, some uh, you know 
<clears throat> polyclay, sorry. And filled all this in and, and kind of created a neck for this guy. So what the plan is, is I'll pop this off, bake it in the oven to make it hard. Uh, and then this will be, pop this portion off and then we'll mold this whole head as one piece. And then I'll take a Dremel and I'll core out the inside here and then put an actual Cotswold neck piece in. Uh, the reason I'm not going to do it all as one, one piece like this is because um, I'm not comfortable with having to go back and notch this out and drill and whatnot. I think it'd be easier just to get a Cotswold neck post. They're pretty cheap. And just uh, core this part, part out with a Dremel and then glue the neck post up in there. So, and it'll give me, it'll also give me the ability to cast this in a color. So I won't have to go and paint the whole uh, headpiece. So that's the plan right now. Um, I'm waiting on some resin and some uh, silicone. So we'll go ahead and get this baked and I'll show you what it looks like and we'll glue it to the head and then we'll do a, a really quick mold tutorial. So we'll be back. All right, welcome back, guys. Let's talk about mold making for a second. <clears throat> so I've got the skull here. I use these yogurt cups as my mold forms. Uh, you can do it a million different ways. A lot of people use Legos. Uh, some people build their molds out of cardboard. But, you know, there's there's no... I shouldn't say there's no wrong way to build a mold, but it's it's fairly easy to do if you just look on YouTube. So I use these uh, yogurt cups for bigger projects. So you can see I've got the skull that we're gonna mold here. I've let the uh, polyclay cure, uh, so it's all ready to go. I've taken a screw, you can't really see it here, but I've taken just like a, uh, a nut head and glued it with hot glue to the back of the skull and then mounted it to the bottom of the cup. So this is gonna be a mold. It's a little bit bigger than the actual skull. So what I've done is I've cut another piece out of the taking another section of the uh, yogurt cups and I'll glue these two together with hot glue and then that'll be my mold form and then we'll go ahead and I'll uh, brush some release on this and then I'll just mix up the mold which is going to be this new stuff I bought uh, it's a two-part one-to-one -one ratio silicone mold and it uh, works pretty well. I just did a muscle body neck post earlier uh, when I debonded it. The clay where it bonded with the uh, silicone and a lot of other cases, the silicone always cures, but apparently it didn't. So it's still sticky. So I'm going to let that sit for a while. I'm not sure what's going on there. So anyways, back to our villain skull. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hot glue the cup together and then we'll get this uh, silicone mixed up and we'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll pull this form so we bet right right back in a second
All right, welcome back guys. Apologies for the mess. So I've went ahead and demolded the skull. This is our mold. Uh, you can see I had to cut it a little bit, but we've got a nice, it came out great. Uh, in the process of demolding the skull, my blank was damaged, but that's okay. I kind of planned for that. So this is what we're gonna have. So we'll grab some resin and then we'll uh, do a couple test pulls of this mold to see what adjustments I need to make. But right now we've got a nice mold for the uh, for the villain skull. So we'll be back with uh, hopefully a nice molded um, portion. What I, actually, before I go, I just use Smooth On Liquid Cast. This uh, Liquid Cast 300 is a quick set. So I'm, I'm going to try it with this to see how I like it. But I might have to get a different resin for this. So we'll 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 mix it. It's just a one to one ratio, just like the silicone. And you just pour it in here. That's all I do. I don't have any fancy uh, pressure chambers or anything else. I just do it this way. So we'll come back hopefully with a nice test pool. All right, welcome back, guys. I apologize for the massive mess here, but we went ahead and did a casting of the. Uh, the skull head sculpt for this other villain. Um, basically what I did is I've, I've got my silicone mold here. Um, I've got a scale and I just took the old head here, which is hollow, it's blow mold. Um, and I had to figure out what the weight of this would be with the, re with the resin. So I just took uh, my dead heads that I make and I kind of just estimated that this skull's volume is about close to the, the the same volume of two of these heads. So I weighed this, and it's 0.6 ounces, I believe. So I just doubled that up, and uh, I mixed up 1.2 ounces of resin. I just measured out each part, 0.6 of A and 0.6 of B on my scale, mixed it together, poured it in the mold, and this is what we got. So it turned out perfect. I'm really, really happy with the way this turned out. Um, when I did cut off the, uh, I don't know if I have that piece, I cut off the piece of the top portion here. And it kind of damaged the skull a little bit, but I'll sand that out and get this thing painted. Now, I really, originally I was going to core out the inside of this and put it on a neck post, but I remembered I had this broken piece or the piece that I fashioned for the, the neck post already. <clears throat> so I will glue and mount that to this head. First I'll paint the head. So that's the next step. We'll get the head painted, get it mounted to the neck post. Um, as you can see here real quick. Yeah, turned out great. So like I said, we'll get the skull painted, mounted to the neck post and put on a body. And that'll be it for that figure. And then the next step for our villain builds will be uh, clothing. So uh, by the time we come back, I'll have this guy hopefully all painted up, mounted, and put on a body. And then we'll uh, we'll get down into some clothing construction. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Pardon the mess. Got a lot of projects going on, as you guys can probably tell. But here's our two villains uh, completed body-wise. Here's the villain we did first out of spare parts. Uh, he looks great. And then here's the one we just finished with the skull. As you can see, the skull is painted. Turned out really, really well. I like the way this guy looks. You can get a little back view of him. And uh, now the next step is to make clothes for these guys, which is going to be Pretty involved, I think, but uh, we'll get we'll get through it. So what we'll do is we'll pause the video. I'll get my workbench all cleaned up, and we'll come back and start talking about clothing. But right now, the two base figures are complete. All right, guys, welcome back. So let's talk about camouflage and BDUs that we're going to make for these two villain figures. Uh, first off, I've got some remnants of black fabric that I'm going to use for the basic figure that we did from the start of this video. And the second figure, the school figure, was going to get this cool custom camouflage I got from Red Kite Customs via Spoonflower. Uh, the guy there over in England made this specifically in the scale I needed for my figure. And it's going to be a really cool uh, set of BDUs for our 
skull villain. So I took apart old 21st century toys, BDUs back in the day with a seam ripper. And then I ironed them to freezer paper and cut them out and made patterns for all the legs and the jacket top. I've got all these patterns here that are still in freezer paper that I made back in like 2000, 2001, I think. So we're gonna actually make a full set of BDUs out of this and a full set of BDUs out of this. So what we'll do is we'll just take this freezer paper that's the pattern, put it on here, lay it out, iron it on and I'll cut it out. And then we'll have a full pattern to sew into these BDUs. So that'll be the next step in this custom is to get these BDUs cut out into the patterns and then we'll take them over and get them all sewn up. So that's the next step. Be patient. When we come back, I should have everything laid out and cut out. All right, guys, welcome back. So we've got the camouflage back from the sewer. Uh, we'll share the first one first. Now I call these my Overland Explorer outfits. You'll see these in more detail in a later time, but here's just a standard black coat, it snaps together. It's got a hood with a drawstring and just a really basic set of elastic pants. This will be for our first basic villain. So this is gonna be like a basic villain outfit. This one here is of course, Red Kite Camouflage Custom done in a 21st century toys style uh, set of bottoms. And then we have an Overland Explorer Deluxe Jacket here, which is uh, similar to the one, the black one we just saw, yet I've added two uh, oversized pockets on the bottom. So this will be on our skull-headed or cruel figure, and the other one will be on our basic Mars figures. So we got these done. Happy to finally accomplish that goal for this video. So next up, uh, we're going to come back with both figures fully clothed and uh, hopefully outfitted and geared. And we'll uh, talk about each figure individually and have some final thoughts and wrap this cool Basic Builds Villains video up. All right, guys, welcome back. So here are our completed villains. Now, before I uh, delve into these two guys... This was a long video and I do apologize. It was a little cumbersome, I know, for a lot of you guys. So I don't blame anybody for not watching the whole thing. But there are some pretty good uh, tutorials in here. So be patient. Um, this is going to be a part one deal because I have uh, several villains that I'm going to make and then redo a few. So this is basically going to be basic, villain, the basic builds villains part one. So these are the first two guys we've made. So the first guy here, let's put him off to the side. This is just going to be a Mars Stormtrooper. So I've got my, my uh, signature Overland Explorer outfit all in black. Uh, really basic, no pockets or anything, just a jacket, the pants. I've got a set of Cotswold uh, reproduction tall black boots. Uh, i got a Matt Squatch Customs uh, rifle. And uh, we've got a Cotswold web belt. And then I've got a World Peacekeepers, I believe, gas mask and a World Peacekeeper's Fritz helmet. So I think this turned out really great. Um, I pr probably plan on doing like three more of the guys like this so I can have like a kind of an army builder type deal. Um, I might actually swap uh, a red belt, a red helmet out for like an officer, or maybe a red beret or whatever, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So this is just your basic uh, Mars Stormtrooper for my villains. Now, this guy here is cruel. Um, as you guys will see, hopefully, in an upcoming photo story of his origin and uh, who he is as a villain. But obviously, um, he's awesome. It's got my uh, Overland Explorer uh, with the 21st century style BDU pants, pockets on the jacket. It's got the Red Kite Custom Camouflage. I think this is a World Peacekeeper's uh, chest rig. Uh, just a real basic deal. Uh, as you can see, obviously, the head that we did, um, really, really cool. I kind of weathered it a little bit, gave him the green eyes, and uh, turned out great. Now, also, we've got a few things of note by other manufacturers. I've got a cool, it's a Megatron's Transformers pistol in 1-6 scale. 
by uh, hold on a second here by uh, Mark II Design. Uh, Mark had these and sold me, I believe, his second to last one. He kept one for himself. So when he did my jetpacks, uh, he sent me one of these. Awesome. And then we've got Cody Poplox 4583, his old style uh, adapters for the damn toy hands. I think this guy turned out awesome. But one of the coolest things I made for him, I haven't really finished it yet, but it's in a prototype stage, is this cool uh, wrist weapon or wrist gun here. It's just a simple uh, piece of plastic sleeving with a cool little turret from the final faction line of figures. I've had these for a while and I actually planned, when I bought these, I planned on using them for this specific villain. So I think it's a cool touch, him being able to kind of use this to shoot people as a secret type weapon. But uh, I love the way this guy turned out cruel and uh, I'm excited to use him in an upcoming photo story. So recapping what we did, for this uh, basic builds villains part one we basically rebuilt this guy from scratch the ground up restrung him and uh, just built him with spare parts and then threw on some custom clothes um this guy here we had a cotswold body mold or cast the head from a mold i made from this cool blow mold skeleton i found at my parents house and then we made custom camo and got some cool custom uh, items for him as well. Now, I did buy a pair of custom hiking boots. Let me grab them. I did grab a custom pair of these Loa hiking boots, uh, but they have the pegs molded on the inside. And I need to get a set of the foot adapters from Cody at Pop Box 4583 sometime. I was going to actually use those on this guy, but I actually just used a set of Danner. Um, I believe they're BBI Elite Force boots. Turned out okay. I'll probably convert these to the Loa boots at some point in time. So just be aware that he's not 100% complete. Other than that, guys, I think these guys turned out uh, amazing. I really, really like this figure cruel i think he is one of my better customs um i, I kind of really went above and beyond to make this guy and uh, he's not by far uh, he's not by any means a finished product i got a few more things to do to him but they're finished for now and maybe we'll see these guys return in part two we'll definitely see these guys in a photo story in the future so i hope you guys enjoyed this part one of my basic villains or basic builds villains um like and subscribe to the page definitely like the videos it helps me out quite a bit uh, let me know in the comments what you think of these villains. I know a lot of you guys out there have made your own villains. And uh, there's a lot of them that have really done a good job. Made some really cool guys. And I enjoy watching all your videos as well. So I hope you guys are doing great out there. Hope you enjoyed the video. And in the meantime, guys, keep living the adventure. And cheers.